Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at foreign tax credit, and this will be part one of two. I will have two parts for the foreign tax credit. If you really want to cover the foreign tax credit, you could have five different parts, but this part will be the basic. In the next session, I will work a little bit further with multi-branch situation. This topic is covered in international accounting or taxation course, also covered on the CPA exam as well as the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. Here's a list of all the courses that I cover. Please check out my YouTube. On my website, I do have additional resources where you have the PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice questions, true false questions, 2000 CPA questions. I strongly suggest you check out my website. StudyPal.co is an artificial intelligence driven st study body platform that matches you with a CPA, CFA, or any other for any other uh, test prep candidate. They are located in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. What are the prior sessions that are helpful for this uh, for this session? You need to know the difference between uh, you need to know about branch income, U.S. branch income. You need to know about controlled foreign corporation and subchapter F income. I do have the link for any prerequisite in the description. If you don't find the link, please email me. Let's talk about foreign tax credits. That's that's the basic idea of this chapter. Well, we learned from prior chapter, and this is why I talk, from prior lessons that foreign branch income and foreign subsidiary subchapter F income must be included in the U.S. taxable income in the year earned. Now, in determining the, the net U.S. tax liability on these sources because they are taxable, U.S. companies are allowed to either, so because you don't want to be double taxed, you're either allowed a deduction, notice this is a deduction on all foreign taxes paid on the related foreign income or a credit. So here I'm going to highlight those two words because they mean two different things. You could either get a credit or you could either get a deduction. The deduction will be for all the taxes paid that are related to your business, to that foreign income business. And the credit is for income taxes paid on the foreign income. And we'll see how the difference between whether you took the deduction or the credit, which one is more beneficial for you. Then there's another overall limitation, but this is generally what you are allowed. So income taxes that are given credit for include withholding taxes on dividend, but sales tax, excise tax, and other type of tax are not included. So remember, when you are gonna be taking the tax credit, you're gonna be taking cre tax credit on withholding taxes on dividend and income taxes. So basically the income taxes that you paid on your income and withholding on dividend. Unless, okay, unless the credit taxes other than income tax are substantial, it's more advantageous for a company to take the foreign tax credit rather than the tax, tax deduction. Simply put, what are we saying here? In general, in general, companies end up taking credit. And you, you know, if you know anything about you, the US tax system, credits, generally speaking, are worth much more than a deduction because credits give you dollar for a dollar refund or dollar for a dollar tax satisfaction versus a deduction. Well, if they give you a $100 deduction, Okay, simply put, if you're paying 21%, you're going to get $21 in, in basically in benefit. But if they gave you $100 tax credit, guess what? That's mean $100 equal to $100 deduction. So the tax credit, generally speaking, not generally speaking, they are worth more than deduction. And we will look at an example anyhow. So let's take a look at an example. Assume a USD, which is a US company's foreign branch, earns income before income taxes of 100,000. Income taxes paid to the foreign government are 15,000. That's how much they paid in taxes. Sales and other taxes to the foreign government are 10,000. Now, this company must include 100,000 of foreign branch income in its US tax return and computing their US taxable income because this is what they have to include. Well, we're going to look at both options if they took the deduction versus the credit and determine which one is more beneficial. Let's take a look at this. Let's assume they want to go with the deduction. Well, their foreign source income is 100,000. This is how much they have to report minus the deduction on all foreign taxes paid. Now we are dealing with the deduction. So the deduction, they paid 10,000 in sales and other taxes and 15,000 in income taxes. So all in all, all in all, they can deduct $25,000 from their taxable income. Their U.S. taxable income becomes 75,000. They have to pay 21%. Well, foreign taxes paid, they did not 
you know, for income, for foreign tax credit, you can't take, take foreign tax credit because you took the deduction, so you cannot take both. So this is basically doesn't apply for this example. Your liability in the U.S., you have to pay $15,750. let us assume we use now the credit. Now, now we're going to see if you used the credit option. Your foreign source income is 100000 You cannot use the deduction, so this is nothing. U.S. tax income before credit is 21%. So you have to pay to the U.S. government twenty-one thousand. Now the U.S. government will give you fifteen thousand dollar tax credit because you paid fifteen thousand dollar tax credit on your income. Well, what end up to be your liability? Your liability end up to be six thousand. So clearly, as you can see, taking the tax credit is much more beneficial than taking the twenty-five thousand dollar deduction. So the deduction reduce your taxable income. The tax credit give you dollar for a dollar tax credit for the taxes that you paid overseas. So you cannot have both. You have to choose one. You cannot have both. So the foreign tax credit provide dollar for dollar reduction, dollar for dollar. This is the benefit of the tax credit. For every dollar of income taxes paid to the foreign government, the company is allowed a dollar reduction in the amount of income taxes paid to the U.S. government. So you paid $15,000, we are going to give you a credit of $15,000. Now there is a limitation for that credit, we are going to talk about the limitation shortly, but this is the overall idea. So simply put in this example, the foreign tax credit result in a considerably less U.S. tax liability than a deduction. Okay. In the case of foreign branch income, the credit allowed known as a direct foreign tax credit because the company is giving credit for taxes it paid directly to the foreign government. So simply put, it's called direct foreign income tax. We used to have an indirect foreign income tax, but we no longer have it. Um, prior to 2018, foreign subsidiaries income was taxed in the United States when dividends were paid by the foreign subsidiary to the U.S. to the U.S. parent company. This is before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. When, when that existed, dividend paid from foreign sources were included in the calculation of the U.S. taxable income and an indirect foreign tax credit, indirect foreign tax credit, was allowed to the foreign taxes actually paid by the foreign subsidiary but deemed to have been paid by the U.S. government. So they used to say, okay, once we bring the income, we're going to deem that you have paid the taxes and here's your credit. That's, that no longer exists because, you know, now we exempt an income. By exempting dividend received from foreign subsidiaries from the U.S. taxation beginning in 2018, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act also eliminated this indirect foreign tax credit. Simply put, there is no more indirect foreign tax credit because now you can bring your money, the dividend, you can pay dividend, and you can get, you can get a dividend received reduction, which did not exist before. Within certain limitation, view my related lecture to that topic. So the computation of a foreign tax credit, as I told you, you are allowed either a deduction or a credit, but you are limited. So it's not like if um, every every dollar you pay uh, overseas, you're going to get a credit for it. Let's look at the overall overall limitation. The rules governing the calculation of the direct direct tax foreign direct foreign tax credit are very complex, but we're going to try to simplify it. The foreign tax credit is allowed equal to the amount lower of. So this is what you are limited by. The actual taxes paid by the gov by the for to the foreign government, what you actually paid, or the amount of taxes that would have been paid if the income has been earned in the U.S. So they compare two things. They would say this is how much you actually paid. You actually paid three thousand dollar. If that income was 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 earned in the U.S., you would have paid two thousand five hundred. So they would only give you credit for two thousand five hundred, the lower of these two. Or let's assume you paid. $5,000 and the amount of taxes paid uh, if you earn this in the US it's $6,000 that you'd only get what you actually paid okay you get credit for you actually paid so keep that in mind and it's pretty pretty straightforward number two here the amount taxes that you have paid can be computed by multiplying the amount of foreign sources taxable income by the US corporate rate and this is easy it used to be much more difficult because now it's 21 percent this is how you find out and this is known as the overall foreign tax credit limitation this is the limitation simply put the u.s will not allow you a foreign tax credit greater than the amount of taxes that would have been paid in the u.s so simply put you paid more taxes overseas we are not going to give you credit for that simply put if they do give you credit it's like as if they are giving you a refund for taxes you paid overseas so they'll give you the credit up to what would they have been what you would have been charged if that 
income was earned in the U.S. Okay, so to allow a foreign tax credit greater than the amount of taxes that would have been paid in the U.S., this would technically, what we're saying, the U.S. government is is giving you a refund. Uh, for higher taxes paid in foreign countries and that's not going to happen okay so so i want to make sure you understand the overall foreign tax credit is you can pay as many taxes as you want to overseas but when the only credit the u.s government will give you is they would say okay if you earn this income in the u.s this would have been your taxes and this is the credit that we'll get that we will give you okay so they, they're, they're not going to give you a refund for taxes paid overseas so this is how you compute the overall limitation you will take your foreign source taxable income divided by your worldwide taxable income multiplied by the U.S. taxes before the foreign tax credit, whatever that numbers are. And we'll look at it, we'll look at an example. So the overall foreign tax limit, uh, foreign tax credit limitation must be computed separately for foreign branch income and controlled foreign corporation subchapter F income. So you have to compute that separately for each one of these incomes. Let's take a look at an example. In the next session, we'll cover more. We'll cover this topic a little bit more. So let's take a look at, uh, uh, at an example. Assume that two different US-based companies have foreign branches. Alpha has a branch in country A and Zeta has a branch in country C. The amount of income before taxes earned for each branch is as follows. So here's the amount of income for A, 100,000, for Zeta, 100,000. The branch in country A paid 11% 11, 11 in taxes, which is $11,000. The branch in country Z paid 23% in taxes, which is $23,000. Now, now both, both companies, Alpha and Zeta, would report 100,000 of foreign branch income on their U.S. tax return and and, and each will determine their tax liability in the U.S., which is 21%. So in the U.S., they have to pay 21000 For both companies, 21000 is the amount of U.S. taxes that would have been paid if the foreign branch income has been earned in the U.S. If you earn this 100000 in the U.S., you would pay us 21000 Well, this is going to give us the overall foreign tax limitation for each company. So each company could have a credit up to 21000 So here's what's going to happen. Alpha is going to compare their tax, their income tax paid, which is 11000 to the government of country A and with the limitation of 21000 Obviously, they're going to be short. They're going to take, they're going to give them credit of the two. So you're going to, you're going to get credit for 11000 but you still have to pay the U.S. an additional 10000 Zeta compared their actual taxes paid to the government in country Z with the limitation of 21000 So notice here they paid a little bit more, so you can only get credit for the lower of these two. The lower of these two is 21000 Okay, simply put, this is what the picture would look like. Alpha, U.S. taxable income 100000 In the U.S., they would pay 21% or 21000 They're going to give them a credit. They're going to get a 100% credit for all the taxes paid because it's less than 21%. They are still responsible for paying 10000 Zeta company, their income, uh, U.S. taxable income is $100,000. Um, their, their taxes in the U.S. is 21000 The U.S. government is going to give them a tax credit for 21000 no more than that, and therefore they have no tax liability in the U.S. Matter of fact, they have an additional 2000 It's called excess foreign tax credit, and we'll talk about this in a moment. So notice Zeta, they have an additional 2000 we, We're going to see in a moment what we can do with this 2000 so Alpha has a net U.S. tax liability after the foreign tax credit of 10,000, which is an additional 10% because they have to 10 plus 11 equal 21. The U.S. requires Alpha to pay an effective tax rate of 21%. Simply put, you have to pay 21% or have paid 21% of the foreign country. The Z company, Zeta, has no tax liability after the foreign tax credit, you know, because we paid enough. Now, but Zeta has already paid more than the U.S. tax rate in country C, so no additional taxes will be paid. Instead, the $2,000 difference between the $23,000 and the $21,000 allowed is called excess foreign tax credit. What can we do with this excess foreign tax credit? Excess foreign tax credit may be used to offset additional taxes paid to the U.S. United States on foreign income in the years in which the foreign tax rate are lower than the U.S. tax rate. Okay, so... This is what the excess tax credit is created. You paid a little bit more than what you should have paid in the U.S. So what can you do with this excess foreign tax credit? You can carry it back one year. 
the company applies for a refund for additional taxes paid to the U.S. on foreign income in the prior year. Again, you, you, can, you can file an amendment, go back to the prior year, and if you had foreign source income and you had to pay taxes, you can ask for a refund, so use it to get a refund. Or, if you don't have anything in the prior year, you can carry it up to 10 years. The company reduced your future U.S. Tax, tax liability in the event that additional taxes must be paid on foreign source income. So this credit only can be used against foreign source income, not for any income. That will be nice. But again, if they do give you credit, it means they are giving you credit for taxes paid in a foreign country. They would only give you credit against foreign source income in the future, if that's the case. So in effect, the excess foreign tax credit can be used only if in the previous year or in the next 10 years, the average foreign tax rate paid by the U.S. company is less than the U.S. tax rate. So as so in the next 10 years, if, if your average tax rate is lower, okay, uh, then you could use that credit. That credit will kick in. Now, we need to talk about a little bit more about the credit. And the only way we can kind of um, illustrate the, the concept of this foreign tax credit and the benefit of it is to look at part two. This will be part two, as always. Please connect with me. Check out my website for additional lectures and additional resources. And subscribe to my videos. Like them, share them, put them in the playlist. Thank you very much and good luck.